Number 55. The density of a certain gaseous fluoride of phosphorus is 3.93 uh, grams per liter at STP. Calculate the molar mass of this fluoride and determine its molecular formula. Okay, so first things first, let's list everything that we got, and then let's answer the first question. We want to find out the molar mass. So they told us that the density of this compound was 3.93 grams per liter, so I have a D value. So I like to do lowercase d. Uh, some professors might do like this like weird little p. That's a row, um, but they mean the same thing, right? So D equals 3.93 grams per liter. Okay. Maybe I'll do that like that. And now they're saying that this is STP. Remember, whenever they give you STP, they're secretly giving you other values. STP means standard temperature and pressure. When you're at STP, you have a temperature of 273 Kelvin, and you have a pressure of 1 atm. Okay. So now we want to calculate the molar mass. I'll put it as capital M, lowercase m, molar mass. And this is what we want to find out. So now we just analyze what we have and basically pick the right formula. Since they gave us a density and they're looking for the molar mass, we've seen this formula a little bit, right, a couple of times. It's the derivation of the PV equals NRT. It's this formula, PMM equals DRT. Now the R value is always there. So this has to be 0 0.0821 and this locks all the other units in place. The R value, we know what the units are, ATM times liter over mole times Kelvin. So the pressure has to be an ATM and at STP it's easiest to say that we have one ATM. So we know that. We're looking for the molar mass Okay, so if I have this, I'm looking for this, that means that I should have the other three. We always know the R value. The density, thank goodness, they told us that. And remember, when we're using the density formula in this equation, it has to be grams per liter. If it was grams per mil or any other thing that is not grams per liter, you have to convert it first. But thank goodness they gave us that. And the temperature, they, you know, we have to have it in Kelvin. So that's STP. The easiest one to know is that it's 273 Kelvin. So we have this. So let's just plug everything in and solve for the molar mass. So we got 1 times X equals the density, which is 3.93 times the R value, 0.0821 and then times by uh, the temp, which is 273. And essentially, right, we would divide by one, but basically dividing by one is the same, so I can just remove this, right? And X, the molar mass, would just be these three things multiplied by each other. So we get X equals, let's see what that molar mass is. 3.93 times 0 0.0821 times 273. Um, I'm seeing, three sig figs. So we have 88.1. And molar mass is gram per mole. Okay. So this is the molar mass. All right. So I'm just going to highlight this. And that answers the first part. Okay. Now from here, it seems like we have to find the molecular formula. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is I will just put like a little line over here because I'm going to do my work over here. Now, they told us that the compound was a gaseous fluoride of phosphorus. Those were the only two elements that they gave us. So I know that basically it has to contain a phosphorus, which is P on the periodic table, and it has to contain an F, which is a fluorine right? Fluoride. Those are the only two elements on my periodic table that's in this compound. Now remember, whenever we're finding a molar mass, we're just going to the periodic table and adding up how many we got. 
So on the periodic table, phosphorus equals 30.97 grams per mole, and the fluorine is 19.00 grams per mole. Okay. So now basically all that we have to do is come up with a uh, variety, not a variety, but a combination of phosphorus and fluorine so that it equals 88. So let's see. It seems like we're going to definitely need a phosphorus. We need at least one of each. So if we have one phosphorus, that's going to bring our total up to 30.97. So if we have a total, so maybe I'll say like we have a total mass of 88.1 and we're, you know, using up one phosphorus, we have a total left of, let's see, 88.1 minus 30.97. So we have a total of 57, 57.13 left to use. Well, we might say maybe there's another phosphorus, right? I still have room. I, another phosphorus costs me like 37, uh, sorry, 30.97. I got 57. So let's see. If I did subtract, again, 30.97, 30.97, I would get 26 left over. And 26 and 19 don't go nice with each other, right? There's no way that I could take a 19 and turn it into 26. So that means that I don't have more than one phosphorus. So now let's see. Now I'm going to see how many, you know, phosphorus, uh, fluorines I have. So now I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to add one fluorine to the mix, and one fluorine is 19.00. So if I get rid of that, right, by subtraction, 57.13 minus 19, I get 38. Hmm, 38.13. And you see how if I just times 19, I do get 38. So if I do this one more time, and maybe if I, maybe if I just bring this up a little bit, whoop, I forgot to get the, the full F, there we go. And if I subtract one more F, right, that's another 19. And you know, we would subtract these, right? The, the 88.1 minus this, minus, because we're just, you know, getting rid of them, minus 19. I have 19 left over, 19.13. So if I get rid of one more F, which will cost me another 19, we basically come to the answer. So let's see. I needed one phosphorus and one, two, three fluorines. So my molecular formula would be one phosphorus. So I could just write P. You could write P1, but technically you don't have to. But now I have F3. Three fluorines, so I put that three there. And that is your final answer. So basically you were just trying to find a combination of the two elements that comes to 88 uh, as your molar mass. Okay. And hopefully that makes sense. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Um, let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out, and I will see you all in later lessons. Bye-bye.